Welcome to I Just Wanted to Push Record, a producer's podcast, where lifestyle, arts, community, culture, and production meet. Two producers, two cultures, and a whole lot of flavor. Join hosts Lena and JC for fun conversations, cool interviews, sharing tips, laughing through production hiccups, and celebrating the art of it all. Ready to roll? It all starts with Pushing Record. Man, that was a beast. That oh. was a beast. Yeah, I was not imagining how that was going to turn out. Yeah, I mean, I, like we normally we get ambitious, but that one, I mean, it was a good thing. Like, it's good to like push our limits, but at the same time, shoo. I mean, in that situation, you had a host who hadn't been hosted in a long time. Then we had a bilingual guest, but then we had a unilingual guest, but the host and the unilingual guest didn't speak the same language. And then the bilingual person really didn't know what they were going to talk about. <laughs> I know. It was, I mean, when we talk about it as producers, we were like, yeah. No problem. Not problem at all. Like, that's going to be easy. We, we're ready. Like, we record 30 minutes, and then we're going to be out, like, you know, 40 minutes, like, 45 minutes. It's going to be good. Yeah. And then you end up like, oh, my God. Still sweat, uh, and and we even did the pre-production meeting, right? That we did the pre-production meeting, and I, I'm thinking, I'm telling them, I spend extensive amount of time. Normally, our pre-production meetings are anywhere, what, like ten, maybe twenty minutes. Yeah, it was an hour long pre-production meeting, <laughs> and it was the host and one of the guests, and I'm like, here's what we want to do, here's what we want to do, and I'm thinking that's going to help. The host came in with stacks of paper, like he was going to read some type of script, like. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, this is not what we talked about. Like, you went on his own playbook. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the worst part because it's like, that's why the pre-production meetings are for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to get you ready to be like, okay, ready. This is what we talk about. Like, we're ready to go. Not to come, like, with new things. And then it's like, okay, this is, this is not happening. Yeah. So yeah. it was like too many factors happening in the same place at yeah. the same time. <laughs> well, and don't forget, we even had um, there was a, there was a recording coming right after it, oh. right? So like, so there was a time crunch. It's almost like the perfect storm. We had three guests on the show that normally only has one guest and a host. We had a couple different languages. Like when you really think about it, thank goodness you were there. Um, <laughs> and then on the other side, we were still crunch for time. We and then we added the cameras like this show. We don't normally have cameras, so we added a new element to it. So all of these different things going on and we still had to figure out a way to kind of pull it off. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's important to like what you're saying, because it's OK. Some people will say, oh, yeah, just it's only audio. Mm -hmm. Right. It's mm -hmm. going to be easy. But then when you had to like put other elements like video in mm -hmm. it just to use for social media, to use for your shorts or for whatever is what you you need it. That's, that gets even more yep, tricky. Yep, yep. And then you got, I mean, and then you just got to take in the human element, right? Like that's equipment and deliverables, right? We know we want reels. We know we want video. We know we want audio. But now put in a human factor. You've got, let's say your host is like, doesn't deal well with change, right? Because you remember we, we actually moved him to another part of the table and he spent five minutes on, oh, wait, I've, I've got suggestions for next time. Like uh, you, you should not have the guest, right? Like, <laughs> And I'm, and you know, we're like, dude, we we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. I mean, you should be fine. Like, you have plenty of space. It's fine. Like, I mean, there's nothing like crazy. But it's like, oh, oh, are, are we on? Like, yeah, are the microphones working? Like, I'm like, <laughs> it's the same thing. We just move you from another place exactly. to the table. Like, yeah, definitely, there are many things that for us, it's like, it's just one little thing, right? But then for someone can be like, it's a huge change. And why is it why is it that that in those situations, it's only when you have a short amount of time that everybody wants to be a comedian, everybody wants to tell a story, everybody, <laughs> you know, like then it's like, I've got a joke. I've got a joke where if you're giving it and we're like, can you just sit still? I want to get the levels. <laughs> I, can I get the levels? And then when you ask them, can I check your mic? Then they don't have they, anything to say. They don't want to talk. They're like, what? But, but where are you talking? Hello? Hello. Like, <laughs> you can't like, hear me. Tell me, tell me what you have for breakfast. Uh, I don't eat breakfast. You're, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. It's like, come on, please help me out. But you know, I heard a good one one time. Somebody said, "What you do is you have them describe your mother's kitchen, right? Because <laughs> then, because then it's not a one-word answer, right? <laughs> but then when I tried it one time, then what it turned into is that they sit there and they're like, oh, oh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. How can I describe that? 
And then they just like they kept thinking, but it's like just tell me <laughs> something. Please, please. I think <laughs> like, I think your bottom line is like even when you think, I mean, the best laid plans can go wrong, right? Uh-huh. Which is all the more reason why it should turn into you got to you have to have everything already fixed and in place that you can so that you can kind of deal with, you know, like all those type of things. Right. And then the emotion. And then, oh, I was going there like you're not counting on, you know, what the topics are going to be like too sensitive for someone in the interview. You know, like for us, it's like, yeah, let's just talk about the history. What, what are you doing? Like your project, your passion. But then, wow, it comes the emotion, and then it's like it, all these things together. That is like they don't even like are be able to talk. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. hard, and then it's like, okay, what do we do? Yeah, you know, what can we do to make it better? Like we just need to wait, and then now as the producers, then we start counting time. Right, right, <laughs> right. And like I said, it was it's ambitious because here's the thing I didn't think about is, you know. Even with that emotion, like, all right, I know skills and stuff that like tricks of the trade, I would say, that I bring into, right? Like in moments like that. But when you're recording podcasts, I think it's a little bit different, right? Like if we were doing a live television interview, which is what I'm accustomed to, well, you just don't bother. You don't sit there and say, hey, hey, you got to stop all that crying. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> we got an interview to do, right? You just have to kind of let them get through it and either skip some questions or, you know, or let yep. have some trust in the host to be able to carry it. But when it's a podcast and you're like, well, we want to touch on this point, we want to touch on this point, yeah. and we've got like sponsor things we got to hit, mm-hmm. all those different things, you got to be able to kind of, you know, move and be able to reposition and deal with the host that doesn't deal well with not having information and trying to adapt in the situation. Yeah, and, and the worst part, like like you mentioned, you know, is a person that speaks one language, the other one speaks another one. Mm-hmm. And then it's like the guest is having this emotion, but the host is not able to connect right, to it. Right, <laughs> That's right. That's the worst part. <laughs> You're sitting there bawling your like, eyes out, and then all oh. of a sudden he's like, oh, well, that's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, interesting, so let's move on. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I I like it because, you know, it's like if you're in the gym, you know, you're trying a new a, a new weight. Right. You're either adding more weight or you're doing a new dance routine or you're trying a new song. Right. And so you kind of have to go into it expecting everything not to be perfect. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think the most important part in when you encounter situations like that is to kind of, you know, analyze it right like break it down and figure out okay if we were to do have the opportunity to do that again what would we actually do oh right? yeah so definitely how can we make it different <laughs> yeah i let's let's take a quick break and then let's come back and talk about what we would do different okay sure just taking a quick pause here enjoying the convo so far don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more fun tips and stories from lena and jc like we talk about on the show, there are a lot that goes into a successful podcast, more than just pushing record. Whether you're new or seasoned, if you're looking for someone to make your great show idea a reality, then we've got your back. Check us out at olusmedia.com and see how we can help you push record on your next big project. And we are on. Oh, wait. I almost forgot to push record. Now over to Lena and JC. Well, we're back. This is, I mean, this is cool. I like sitting down as we normally do, just talking about what we what we just finished doing, which was recording an ambitious episode of a show that had a lot of challenges from language to time to host management to guest management. Because um, we didn't even talk about one of the guests who, you know, even though he was a part of the pre-production meeting, still didn't have an outline of simple things like, What's your contact information? What's your call to action? You know, and trying to incorporate all those different things. And basically, I like them spinning plates, right? You know how like in the circus, you're like. (laughs) (laughs) Eventually, one plate's going to drop, right? (laughs) It's it's inevitable. But I think when we get to this point, it helps us to be able to come up with what would we do different. So I'll start out with you. From what you saw and what you experienced, what's one thing that you would do different? Well, for me, as a bilingual, definitely, and trying to figure out, like, how to make it work the best possible, I would say probably include the person that speaks, like, the second language Mm -hmm. and 
try to maybe figure out what is the foundation, what's what they're looking for in this episode. So maybe like shorten it out, like, you know, be more punctual. Mm -hmm. So like that will like, okay, tell me about your, like, you know, the passion and everything. And then they start saying like, since they were born, you yeah. know? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I think that that will be something that I will do different. I'd, I'd agree with you. you. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like the pre-production meeting only had two out of the three people that were actually going to be on the show. But it's a double-edged sword, right? Like, I think what's going to be great about this episode is the raw, organic emotion. Yeah. And if they had been a part of the pre-production meeting, maybe that would have happened in the pre-production meeting and we would have lost it in the actual episode, right? True. But True. then we wouldn't have off-put the host. Then we wouldn't. But then it just, you know, so it's like, uh, how do you do it? But I, but I, at this point, right now, I'd be like, I want to vote. Everybody needs to be a part of the post-production <laughs> meeting. That would be my number one. Nobody gets to, if we, anybody misses the pre-production meeting, they're not in it. We're not recording. <laughs> yeah, We're yeah, not that's pushing it. record. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I think that is. I, and the other thing is, I don't know if I communicated enough with the host, right? Like, I think I, I even I, I have some guilt about just thrusting them into that situation. But not so much, unfortunate, that I was dependent, that I felt like I could count on him. I had the arrogance. Like sometimes, you know, you have that confidence, yeah. like, well, maybe you don't, but I do. I have that <laughs> that arrogance of like, oh, I know this host. I know what to do for him. No problem. I can yeah. handle it, right? Yes. And I actually pushed him out of his comfort zone. So I think the other thing that I would say is in 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 opportunities where you're trying to do a lot more, where you're mm -hmm. trying to be ambitious, you've got to take even more time with your host to make sure that they're comfortable because at the end of the day, they're behind the wheel, yeah. right? If we're yeah, recording, yeah. how many times did I have to stop, right? Like that was the other thing because all of us know that every time you stop, that means somebody has to do some editing, Yes. right? So that's more time, that's listening, oh, cut, let's listen again, right? So you're, you're adding yeah. up your number of production hours and the number of hands, even trying to do your time code. So I think another thing I would have done was spend more time with the host. No, yeah, I, I I agree with that. Especially like like you mentioned, it's like yeah, I know him, I know this person, mm -hmm. I know the host, but we didn't count out that he hasn't been in the studio for a little while. Like he was losing, like, you know, the momentum and mm -hmm. all the stuff. So it's like maybe the people get again in the shell that is like, oh, okay, I don't know what to do, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, that definitely agree with that. Um, I will say something that it just for the audience, you know, how can you picture like, you know, these three people here and then one speaks Spanish, the other one speaks English and the other one is bilingual. But then uh, how how we manage that translation yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the in the in the time like that, that we're recording? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I thought something I, I think that's something I will have done different. That will be that part. Yeah. Or even like, logistics, like yes. putting us in that small window of like, we only have an hour and a half. Yeah. And that is getting everybody in, get them seated, get everybody up because we went over the show rundown. We, you know, <laughs> hey, do you know all your questions? You're going to be sitting here. Let's yeah. do the audio check. Like, but we still only have 90 minutes. I probably would have allotted a minimum of two hours. Yeah. A minimum of two hours with the expectation. Can I feel that rush and like, oh, yep. my God, we're not going to make it. Yep. And it's also like, Okay, one part, well, for, for someone that didn't, you know, see it or, like, have been in this situation, it's like one person is answering a question in Spanish. The host is not getting it because he doesn't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then someone else had to translate to him, and then he needs to do a response. So it's, like, too many things happening. Yeah. And then you're losing, like, also the, the sentiment, the, the feeling that the person wants to trust me <laughs> to the other. Yeah. So, yeah, I think something that we will have to, like, review how to manage it better in that sense. I'm, I'm excited about, you know, where we go when we finish, when we actually put our hands on it. Yeah. Um, because in the back of my mind, to your point, I, I always put together a couple different scenarios of how this works. In my mind, worst case scenario mm -hmm. is the, the, the Spanish speaker, total Spanish speaker, Will actually be an extra, right? Like, because uh -huh. we can pull that out and use those as little extra bites. But th that point being that you have to always think of these different scenarios yes. because you know what you want to get and you think it's going to work out that way. But if it doesn't, 
while wow. we're recording, it's kind of like, all right, how can we pivot? Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? And then what do I need? Because now my record list changes, right? Mm-hmm. Like the sound bites I need could change. Like you did a great job with um, setting it up where you're like, but we're missing this one key element to tie all that in, yes. right? We would have been looking at all that content and been like, but we don't have this. But yeah. What, what are we going to do with I this? mean, because it's getting lost in the translation. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, yeah, you don't get to translate the whole thing. And then the other person like, okay, I don't get the whole idea, but yeah, let's let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then being, I mean, kind of like being bilingual in that moment for me was was very punctual. So mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, no, I'm missing this part from the guest or I'm missing this part from the host, both, both languages. But yeah, it was definitely interesting, challenging, and I'm, I'm excited. What are we going to do with this, yeah. JC? Yeah. Well, tell me this. If you had to do all over again, would you not do it? No, no, okay. no. Okay. I will do it, definitely. Yeah. Just like you mentioned, maybe allocate more time. Mm-hmm. Maybe like have everyone involved. In the pre-production. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, implementing all these things that we're talking about yeah. to make it work better. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I think I, I probably would have. I think you should always have what did help is that we did have a show rundown. Yeah. So yeah. everybody didn't come in saying, what are we doing? Well, right. In worst case scenario, we were able to point to the monitor and say, host, follow this. This yeah. is your guy. Even if he didn't want to do it, we had something for this. So I think all the pre-production planning is always a great tip. Yes. Right. Is is always to be able to have that ready. So that way you can start to do other things like add the video. And I mean, we didn't. Luckily, here here are the things that I that I like that we probably take for granted that we've encountered before. Yeah, batteries didn't die. <laughs> right? All the microphones yes. work right. Yes, we had all the SD cards. We had to get there, but we had all the SD cards. Yes. Right, lighting was okay. We had monitor working. Right, like all these different things. We that, had two producers. Two producers, right? <laughs> we pushed record. Like. The, the thing, all the things that we've experienced mm-hmm. that have h- given us hiccups before, we yeah. don't have to worry about them. They were good. Right? Yeah. So so in the story she okay. told, we okay. still got it out within an okay. hour, right? Like, so so we did. Now, the quality is yet to be told. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> but when you look at all that, like, I think that, that those are the progress and the things that you want to kind of yeah. hang your hat on. Not the, oh, my God, that was a hell of a recording. Right? You want to be able oh, to yeah. say, okay, we got through it. And we have something to edit. Like, that's the main thing. We have something yeah. to edit that we can actually put I will, together. I will have hate it if, like, let's say the person is going through all these emotions and a camera will shut down. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, right? Okay, and yeah. it didn't even dawn on me. Like, yeah. it didn't even dawn on me, like, is that shot frame? Is that? <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, we got it. Let's just wait. Yes. Let's just wait it out. Let's yeah. just wait it out. But I, one of the tips that I, that I think I mentioned to you, one uh, trick that I learned was that when someone gets emotional, if they can't compose themselves, Mm -hmm. that sometimes what you can tell them to do is just find someone in the room that they are comfortable to. For a lot of times, if it's like um, uh, someone with an entourage or a personal assistant or something like that, placing them in the shot line of the person that you are talking to or the host Mm -hmm. is always great because they feel comfortable with that person. And nine times out of 10, they know it, right? So not that that was like a confession, but you know, she said something about when she was growing up and her family and what happened to them. And so that can be off-putting to this stranger that you never met oh, yeah, that's yeah. peering into your soul. It's, so being able to have a familiar face, you know, to be able to do that. But luckily it didn't come to that, you know. Um, yeah. I think it was perfect. I think it's the right amount of emotion. I think it's going to give us a time to um, to edit it. Um, the translation part for the audio is still something we've got to work through. So Yes. I'm no, looking I'm, forward I'm to I'm it. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, part of it is what we try to do is provide, you know, these tips mm-hmm. so that, you know, when um, somebody else might be recording, <laughs> they can sit back and they can say, all I wanted to do was push record. Push record. <laughs> this has been JC and Lena on I Just Wanted to Push Record. All right. See you soon. Uh-oh. No space on the memory card. <laughs> but you got this one, so we're good. We got it. We got it. Back up. Can you say back up? Back up, back up. <laughs> That's why. Thank you for listening to I Just Wanted to Push Record, a producer's podcast. Be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. 
To hear other episodes or read the associated blogs, visit olasmedia.com. And be sure to follow us on Instagram with the handle Olas Media Studio. I just wanted to push record. Our producer's podcast is produced in studios in San Diego, California, and Tijuana, Baja, California. Olas Media is an IVC media company. Olas Media.